One of the biggest cathedrals north of Italy, York Minster is visited yearly by half a million sightseers and religious followers. Unknown to many, it is also the home of one of the oldest police forces in the world. The Minster Police work behind the scenes ensuring the smooth running and safety of the Minster. We are here 24 hours a day. We're a, a dedicated team of this building. And I think we're an integral part of the Minster. Did you know that the Minster had a police force? The Minster police have guarded the Minster from as early as 1285. Today, they are a team of 11 officers who work behind the scenes of the Minster, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's general looking after the building. Making sure that the place is safe. That's not just the Minster, but it's the schools, the stone yard, the glaziers trust, the offices, and all the residents. We make regular patrols. And, uh, did I say lost property? <laughs> and lost property again, twice. We get quite a lot of lost property. A Sunday service has kept Steve Patrick and Kadir in the police headquarters. They've been now leaving to prepare the Minster. At midday, the Minster will open to the general public, who are often surprised by their presence and often ask who they are. They come to the window and ask how long we've been here. Quite a few people are curious to know um, the ins and outs and the history of the Minster Police. Of the 43 Minsters and cathedrals within the UK, York Minster is one of only a few who keep a dedicated team of constables. The, the kids usually are quite interested in the police. Uh, they just want to see our dungeons, uh, but unfortunately we don't have any dungeons anymore. The Minster did have a prison. It even had its very own court system. This was within a large area of land called the Liberty of St. Peter, which was a third the size of medieval York, and, until 1839, was controlled directly by the church, just like the Vatican City. The Minster Police was such an example of policing that Sir Robert Peel took note of it before creating the Metropolitan Police that we know now. Unlike the predecessors, the Minster Police today have no power of arrest. We don't have any powers of arrest apart from the normal that everybody, every citizen has. I think we have to take the gently, gently approach. We try and do it with as good humour as we possibly can. As for an arrest, we will need the cooperation of the North Yorkshire Police. You get the odd one or two now and again uh, that call us chocolate coppers. Uh, I've been called a chocolate copper before. I'm often stopped on the floor of the Minster. And we try to assist them as much as we can if they have any questions. Basically they come to us if we're on a patrol and they need help or we're out in the Minster. Mostly it's um, questions about the Minster or directions. We'll get uh, family members asking to uh, see uh, the name of their loved ones. We'll go open the book for them, they can see the name and leave them to reflect on that. Uh, so that is uh, quite moving. You meet people from all over the world, all walks of life. It's all part of the job. It's a privilege to be here.
Uh, we've seen as a false alarm, the activation went smoothly, uh, the brigade came, saw the Minster was evacuated with a reset the system and then uh, informed the staff to bring the uh, visitors back into okay. the Minster. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. The Minster has caught fire several times over its long history. Because of this, the Minster Police have the duty to patrol both the floor and above ground. Tiring work, as each tower can have at least over 200 steps. We've got a head policeman that ins uh, insists that we keep reasonably fit. You've got to have a certain level of fitness. There are lots, lots of turrets, lots of steps to go up. Yeah, it's pretty exhausting. Yeah. We take the fire brigade, if we get fire activation, we're the ones that have got to take the brigade up above ground. So a good knowledge of the building above grounds is essential. Poor Sod on night, which is first night shift, and we were near the vestry. Uh, there was a little cabin there, that's why it's called police cabin. And he'd gone for a walk, gone into the south transept and he could hear something splashing on the floor and he thought, that must be raining outside. And it was molten lead dropping through the roof. So, not a very good first night shift for him. It's late. The public have gone. And Adam and Bev are having a few problems okay, with the alarms. Well. Soon, Adam will leave Bev as she stays oh, to guard the minister for the rest of the back. night. It's essential that the systems are working for they allow Bev to see every part of the Minster, its grounds and external buildings from the comfort of police headquarters. I find the Minster a, a very peaceful place on a, on a night. It's a bit of a release from the day where you can come and your, your jobs are just minor jobs once the work's done at the beginning of the night. So, yeah. um, infrared camera is... Oh, no. Bev and Steve Dawson are now alone on the night shift. Throughout the night, they will be watching cameras and making regular patrols. It's a lonely shift, but in a building like the Minster, one can never expect a boring night. I've had a few moments that I can't explain. I saw a, a, a figure walking into the uh, wall underneath the clock. I could swear that I could hear children in the Minster. You spook yourself. My dog went to the South Transit. There was a, a French tourist that decided that he was going to stay there for the night. Fortunately, uh, we managed to persuade him that it's not the place to stay. And it cost me six quid for a taxi fare, uh, which I didn't get back. The Minster team are a dedicated force. They've been guarding the Minster for over 700 years. Today, they still play an equally important part in the Minster and will play a big part in ensuring the safety of the Minster's future.